International Man of Mystery. Tuesday. Do I make you horny, baby? The Spy Who Shagged Me. Thursday. Funny Man Eddie Murphy plays the tough guy. Metro. Our great movies keep you grooving. Hold on to your mojo, Austin. You're on City TV. I'm Russ Froze, and you are watching the first edition of City Pulse at 6. Tonight, how safe is your city? Concern grows after another attack on a foreign student. Our commitment is to be an alternative. City TV, it's here, and that means you get a voice in local television news. I'm Cindy Leong. Just how safe is the water you're swimming in? We've done our own testing, and we'll tell you what we found. Good evening. Is Vancouver safe for foreign students? This weekend, a third Korean woman was attacked, and now the Korean Society has revealed that in early July, it received a letter threatening Korean women. Jocelyn Laidlaw now with Community Reaction. What do you think the reaction will be in Korea with three attacks like this? I think they'll be really shocked at this moment because, um, as we know, the Vancouver is the safest place to come, right? But not anymore. Friday's victim, who's been studying in Vancouver for eight months, tells police she was calling her mother in Korea from this payphone at 3 a.m. Friday because of the time difference. She heard a loud truck engine and two men arguing. Then, as she dialed the phone, she was grabbed from behind, thrown in a vehicle, and sexually assaulted. She managed to escape only after biting her attacker's ear. She could not see the attacker until she got into the vehicle. So there's no indication that this was motivated by race. Any argument over what? Police Any believe the attack was completely was random and not connected to two other assaults on Korean students in recent months. But they are investigating this letter, sent to the Korean Society of BC 12 days ago and handed over to police today. It reads, we are proud to know Jiwon Park is still staying in hospital. We warn all you effing Korean. We will kill one Korean a week, but girls can stay here as prostitutes since they are good tools for sex. Korean men have small eyes, so stay as slaves from the great Canadian white power. Unrelated or not, it has foreign students and their schools concerned. Most of the students are aware that you know, these three uh, random attacks happen in places where students just should not be on their own. Since then, I and my friends don't go any, anywhere at night. Uh, before I came here, I heard about Canada. So Canada is really safe for students, but uh, I think nowadays uh, it's not safe anymore. In Vancouver, Jocelyn Laidlaw, City Pulse. And for more on this story, we go now live to our crime specialist, Dave Lefebvre. As our specialist, Dave will be keeping crime in perspective for us. Dave? Yes, Russ. Well, today's story is about crime, but more to the point, it's also about public safety. What we have here are three separate attacks on three different individuals. The first one, of course, was Jiwon Park in Stanley Park. That one happened around 8 o'clock at night. Wasn't quite dark out yet, and it's possible that might have given a false sense of security. I know I myself have some friends who won't jog in Stanley Park because it is such an isolated location. They prefer the seawall. The second one happened about a week ago in Surrey in the Hawthorne Park area. That was about 104th and 142nd Street. That one happened between 9 and 10 at night. Again, a lone woman out on the street at night. And the last one happened this Friday. That was along Skeena and Hastings Street. This one, perhaps the most troubling because of the time, 3 o'clock in the morning. So I guess everybody has to reassess at this point how safe they feel in this city. It is, of course, a very welcoming city and a comforting city, but it is a big city as well. And should people be out on the street so very late at night? All right, we will stay on top of this story. Thanks. Dave Lefebvre, our crime specialist. Is it another case of Vancouver being a no-fun city? City Hall wants to shut down an indoor skateboard club. Christina Stevens tells us why. So why does the city want you to close? Because, unfortunately for us, the space that we have is zoned for retail. We are waiting, currently right now, for the cease and desist order that we were told is in the mail. So we expect to have that in the next day or two, and then we have 30 days to shut down. What we're asking for is the city recognizes that we're doing more good than harm in this neighborhood. 
Their skateboard club is in the heart of the downtown east side, right next to a strip club. Yet the city wants them out. There's a lot of drugs, a lot of prostitution going on down here, and they're cracking down on the skateboarding. Yes, they're cracking down on skateboarding because we are criminals. It's illegal to skateboard in the city of Vancouver. This just is the only place, one of the only places downtown there is to skateboard when it rains. Like, we haven't got anywhere. Instead of criminalizing them and the people who work towards helping the community, we should be supporting them and making it happen. The guys who skateboard here say not only are they helping get boarders off the streets, they're also helping clean up the neighborhood. Three years ago, they allocated $235,000, that's the city of Vancouver, for an outdoor skateboard park in downtown Vancouver. We haven't seen it. We don't even think that there's a plan going. They haven't even looked at property yet. Near Maine and Hastings in the downtown east side, Christina Stevens for City Pulse. Now, the City of Vancouver Zoning Department returned our calls just before we went to air, and all they'll say is the use of the property is illegal. The skateboarders plan to show up at the City Council meeting tomorrow. And good news for all you campers opposed to a logging road being built through part of Manning Park. Today, the forest company Interford dropped the plan, which it says had been on the back burner anyway. But that didn't stop a leading opponent from celebrating. This is great news. It shows that when citizens stand up, when get out there and, and sign the petitions and write in the letters, we can protect our parks. So it's just fantastic, both for Manning Park and is proof positive that we, if we stick together, we can protect the rest of our parks here in British Columbia. And before today's announcement, our new environment specialist, Peter Lowe, visited Manning Park and he found out that park users are not very happy that the provincial government wants private companies' ideas on how to develop BC parks. It's beautiful now, but this corner of Manning Park could all change someday soon. This marked tree shows where the provincial government is thinking about allowing a logging road through this area to access timber just outside the park. So here we go. That one I got to change. It's filled up. This one's got lots of space for you right on. I also got here a newspaper that talks about the, the cuts to the BC Park system yeah. and this thing in Manning Park, and it also has who to write to. There's the minister in charge of the parks. I'll give it when people learn that there's a logging road plan to go through Manning Park and that Interfor, the logging company involved, wants to log endangered species habitat, spotted owl habitat, they're shocked and then they're angry. I've done all those trails through Manning Park. And it's a beautiful area. Every time I come through here, it just brings you back to the wilderness and you're so close to Vancouver. I just don't think we need to destroy all our recreational areas. I like to see everything in its natural state. Yep. Even if there's a highway going right through it already? Yep. But, um, you know, people can enjoy the park still without having logging and stuff going on. Because the government hasn't made public its plans for Manning Park, the Western Canada Wilderness Committee has set up an information booth explaining what might happen. A series of cut blocks up 20 Mile Creek, which is a wild valley that's never been logged. This is all spotted owl habitat, and the spotted owl is one of the most endangered species in Canada. Uh, the provincial biologists say that if this kind of logging continues, the owl will be extinct in Canada within five to ten years. This is what people are worried will happen to many of our parks. 18 years ago, Cypress Mountain got a 50-year lease. Since that time, development hasn't stopped. There's less public dollars available. I think the minister responsible isn't ruling anything out when it comes to developing BC parks, including long-term leases. But when you spend that much more on human health and mortality through, and uh, uh, people's lives and health, in healthcare, there's less available for things like providing recreation opportunities for the public. Which is why Victoria has asked private companies for their ideas on how to develop our parks. I'm Peter Lowe for City Pulse. Well, as you probably already noticed, we have become City Pulse, and with our change comes a whole new attitude. We went on air at 6 this morning and Mark Doherty with our new identity. The channel you dialed is no longer in service. The channel has been changed to... 
As the old saying goes, if you build it, they will come. And it appears people are already starting to take notice. From Speaker's Corner to articles in local papers, even other TV stations, there is certainly a buzz in the air about City Pulse. Congratulations, first of all. And, uh... CTV Channel 9 was here looking for the answer to a question on a lot of people's mind. What will City Pulse bring to Vancouver? Our commitment is to be an alternative. We're going to be an alternative in content, we're going to be an alternative in the intensity of our focus, and we're going to be an alternative in style. And in that way, we think we're going to contribute to the community. Safety first! Hey! Hey! Breakfast television kicked things off early this morning and will be providing all the information you need to get your day going. And that is just the start. With City Pulse at 6, 7 days a week, and City Pulse tonight on 5 nights a week, we will be everywhere, reflecting the people, the culture, and the news that is Vancouver. In Vancouver, Mark Doherty, City Pulse. Thanks, Mark, and I want to introduce you to the other members of our City Pulse News team. Uh, Benita Ha will be doing City Pulse Weekend, and Monica Diol for City Pulse Tonight. Uh, Monica, give us an idea of what your show will be like. Our show is going to update stories from the six, give you breaking news every evening, and of course we'll have uh, sports, we'll have weather, and big entertainment scene in true city style. Now, what does that mean, you may ask? <laughs> true city style means we are out there, we are involved, we are engaged right. with Vancouver. Thanks very much, Monica. And Benita, how will the weekend and uh, show change? Well, we're just uh, basically staying the same as far as seeing what's happening in the news and we'll also check out what's uh, happening in our city, what's fun and moving and that kind of a thing. Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay, we look forward to seeing uh, Benita and Monica's shows uh, on City Pulse. Thank you. And still ahead on City Pulse, it's your kind of town celebrating the city that is our own. Also, it may fly in the face of political correctness, but that's just fine with the minds behind Banana Magazine. And Palin with Pam, our entertainment specialist Darren Maharaj is in Malibu with BC's own Pamela Anderson. Gone to a newsstand lately? It is downright confusing. Dozens of magazines with titles coming and going month by month. Clearly, it is cutthroat business, which is all the more reason to celebrate a Vancouver success. Here now live, our trend specialist, Bill Mantis. Bill's specialty is the very latest in social and cultural trends in our city, and tonight we talk about the new media. Bill. That's right, Ross. Tonight we look at Banana Magazine. This local publication for Asian Canadians takes a light-hearted approach at breaking down stereotypes and has become a huge hit. Now meet the young creative minds behind Banana Magazine. Our entire mandate from Banana Magazine is to break stereotypes. Uh, we are here to help give confidence to this generation of Asians. We're hoping Banana is going to be a stepping stone for the next generation to um, inspire them to be something more than they, than they are taught to be. I'm hoping maybe a prime minister one day or maybe an astronaut and whatnot. Um, but we want to encourage them to dream, to, to know that there are Asian Canadians out here that are trying to make a difference, trying to do more than just be what their parents want them to be. It's a little over a year since Banana Magazine first hit newsstands. Now the team is preparing to move out of their original 300 square foot space into this 3,000 square foot space in the heart of Chinatown. As you can see, it's a work in progress. But that not only describes their new digs, but their cutting edge magazine as well. The articles are good. Um, yeah. They like to call in the article, they like the small penis article. A recent article on Asians and penis size poked fun at a stereotype and won rave reviews among readers. What do you get when you confront these issues and maybe have a little lighthearted fun at some of the stereotypes that exist? I think one of the most confident people in the world are people that can laugh at themselves. And while you're doing this, we are making fun of our own stereotypes that people impose upon us. All articles you want to end off on a positive note. We want the readers to come off feeling, wow, they feel great to be Asian. The approach seems to be working for Banana Magazine. Investors are starting to show interest, and plans are underway to start producing bi-monthly editions. I think one of the reasons why we're all so excited about this is because we haven't done this before, and so there isn't um, a stereotype or a model against which we can be measured. And uh, we're all flying by the seat of our pants, and it's great because, you know, we can be creative and fun and crazy, and nobody can tell us that we're doing it wrong. Ah, I'm 
The term banana was once a derogatory reference to Asian Canadians. Get it? Yellow on the outside, white on the inside? That's why the publishers of Banana Magazine felt it was important to reclaim the phrase, basically saying they're proud to be bananas. I think this one is really good for the young, for the youth. You think it's a good thing for young Asians? Yeah. For, no, 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 just only young Asians. For, for me, it's very good. For me. <laughs> <laughs> banana. Our skin, eh? <laughs> the name banana. Are you upset that they used it for this magazine? Not this day and age, no. No, don't bother me. Banana doesn't have a negative connotation for you? No, not at all. Not only for Asian people, I think the Canadian, they can read this one. And you can find Banana Magazine at many local newsstands or subscribe by dropping an email at subscriptions at bananamag.com. For us, now, Bill, has the success of Banana encouraged other young publishers in the city? In fact, it has, Russ. Watch for iWoman. It's a magazine aimed at Indo-Canadian women. It will have lifestyle, fashion, and pop culture, and it launches in September. That's it live here in Chinatown. Back to you, Russ. All right, we'll look for more features on that uh, in the days to come. Thank you, Bill Mantis, our trend specialist tonight. Well, we could not have picked a better day for a launch party in July because... Uh, the weather is absolutely gorgeous, and I hear it's going to be better than we thought this morning, Mark. Just about, Russ. You know, I spent weeks trying to plan all this, right? <laughs> Fixing the weather up just in time so we, uh, for the debut of City TV on the 22nd. Yeah, it's going to get a little cloudier and a little cooler by the end of the week, but not as uh, drastic as we first thought. We backed off all that rain that we were promising by the weekend. That's gone out of the forecast. Here's what we've got right now at Vancouver International. Still a lot of sunshine, but as you can probably tell by my flapping sleeves, a very brisk northwest wind. That ridge of high pressure is still building in and uh, we'll continue to do so throughout this evening take a look at the almanac today we got up to about uh, 25 uh, normally at this time of year it's usually about 22 yesterday was about 23 our record high in the state was 30 our uh, record low was 11 it's not going to get that cool tonight only down to about 16 and then tomorrow more sunshine and could get even warmer than it was today. We'll have all the details on that with our weather forecast in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Mark. All right. And coming up on City Pulse, our weather may be sweltering, but wait till you see what winter has brought to South Africa. We're just going to bring, do lots of things, everything that we can do to raise awareness and, and you know, get financial support and everything that we need. Cool. So that's what we're doing here today, too. Thank yep. you for doing that. Well, hey, we're more than glad it's to do cool. it. It's Indy Week in the Lower Mainland, and that means parties, parties, and even some racing will tell you where you have to be. And Jeff Francis is one step closer to the big leagues. I'll let you know where the Rockies told him to go. I'm health specialist Cindy Leong. Just what's in the water? We'll have that story coming up on City Pulse. Hi, this is Premier Gordon Campbell. I just want to say how pleased I am to see City TV up and on the air. I want to wish everyone all the best of luck. You're going to be a great addition, and I know we're all going to enjoy City TV right here in Vancouver. Welcome back. This being summer, you probably like to swim outdoors, but how safe is the water that you swim in? At the beach, no problem. Coliform counts are posted every Thursday, but it is a different story at swimming pools. So our health specialist, Cindy Leong, set out to find out just how safe our pools are. With so many people in the pools these days, ever wonder just what you might be swimming in? What, what are the main things that you worry about? Just common infections like colds and things like that. Hairs, stuff like that, maybe some saliva. Seagull poop and uh, birds bringing their food in here and dropping it in the water. I'm worried about if people like pee in it. <laughs> to find out just how safe our pools are, we took water samples from several public pools in the Lower Mainland. From the Kitsilano Outdoor Pool, and from indoor pools like Burnaby's Eileen Daly and Coquitlam City Centre Aquatic Complex. We also went to the Newton Wave Pool in Surrey, Richmond's Water Mania, and Ladner's Indoor Pool. We took the six samples to a lab in Richmond for analysis. Here we go. These are pool water samples. Just what kind of things could be lurking in pool water like this? Well, there's all sorts of uh, bacteria that uh, 
could in principle be in the pool water, ranging from uh, common bacteria like E. coli that are uh, example of sort of bacteria people carry around on them, but it can also deposit in pool water. Other more harmful bacteria like Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus, maybe some fungi. So people can get swimmer's ear, uh, rashes, all sorts of things? Yes, there's even been cases where the uh, hamburger disease E. coli, which uh, people usually get from eating uncooked hamburgers, can actually be carried in swimming pools and can cause infections. It shows that we're feeding chlorine. It's just, our set point is 0.8, and it's just feeding a little bit now to keep up to that set point. Pool managers are confident we won't find any bacteria in our samples. Well, we keep our chlorine levels, especially the free available chlorine, a little bit above what is required by the Health Act. If we have a heavy capacity, like it starts to get a little busy, up to 200, 250 people, we'll boost up the chlorine levels in order to make sure the pool's nice and clean. We headed back to the lab to find out if they were right. So what did we find? We found that the results were really good. Um, there was no bacteria in the waters that we could find. Perfectly safe for people to swim in. And uh, chlorination levels must have been just perfect. So our public pools get a clean bill of health, but infection could come from where you least expect it. People with home pools and uh, home hot tubs, there can be a big issue there, um, especially if they don't uh, maintain the chlorine levels high, so bacteria can grow in there. If you're wondering how clean a pool is, here's some tips. Check for clarity. You should be able to see the bottom of the pool with your goggles. And look around the edges of the pool. You shouldn't be able to see any buildup of algae. If you do have any concerns about pool water quality, you can contact your health protection officer in your region. In Vancouver, I'm Cindy Leong for City Pulse. While we bask in the glow of a terrific Lower Mainland summer day, the weather remains very unpleasant in other parts of the world. Don't adjust your TV, that is snow. Parts of South Africa have been declared disaster zones after several days of heavy rain and white stuff. The impoverished Eastern Cape province has been the hardest hit. 22 people have died there from drowning, hypothermia, or other weather-related accidents. Parts of the region have been without water, power, or phone service since the end of last week, when a cold spell gripped a country normally known for its sunny skies. And it's enough to turn a seafood lover into a vegetarian. Australian scientists have made a big discovery, but it's not pretty. It is quite simply a giant squid, a 250-kilogram monster that was found dead on a Tasmanian beach over the weekend. Scientists are completely unfamiliar with the creature, and they think it could be a newly discovered species. They are captivated by its unusual characteristics, which include long, thin flaps of muscle attached to each of its eight ugly arms. No word yet on how it tastes. And coming up in sports, zoom, 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 Vancouver gets ready to put the pedal to the metal with the Indy just days away now. Also ahead, no grass greener than our own. We celebrate our city by the sea. I'm Dave Gary with a brand new business card, but what will City TV mean for you? That coming up on City Pulse. Hey, uh, I just want to talk about Ford and Camel. Uh, Anyways, my grandma was supposed to get a scooter because she can't walk that well, and uh, they actually sent it to the wrong address, and then all of a sudden when all these budget cuts started happening, my grandma couldn't get one. Just stuff like that really pisses me off, so I just wanted to just let you know, Gordon Campbell, that you're like an idiot, and I'm sure lots of people think that. <laughs> Finding a place to live in Vancouver is a challenge. The rental pool is small and it can get pretty expensive. But finding a place to rent gets a whole lot more complicated if you sign on the dotted line with this company. City Pulse, tomorrow at 6. I'm David the Lobster Man, and you're watching City TV. For those of us lucky enough to live here, it is apparent that Greater Vancouver has a little of everything for everyone. But as our man around town, Mark Dockerty, found out, the problem is there just isn't enough time in the day to take it all in. Vancouver, it's a West Coast beauty with so many facets, it's hard to know where to begin. So how about a snapshot, if you like? We'll call it Reflections of the City. Now, it's the old cliche, but Vancouver really is one of the few places in the world where in the same day, you can catch a ride on the slopes, hit the links, 
or go for a boat ride. And once you're down at sea level, well then the sky's the limit for things to do. If you like carnival style fun, have we got festivals for you. Of course, it wouldn't be Vancouver without some good old-fashioned rain, but one of the great things about the city as well is the cultural diversity. You can come to places like Chinatown and experience the culture and also try out the cuisine, and you can order things like this, and I'm not too sure what it is, but I sure hope it tastes better than it looks. Featuring a variety of ethnicity from all over the world, there's no shortage of exciting culture. Of course, there is always Vancouver's coffee culture. You can't start your day without one. Cappuccino pronto. Oh. Buono. <laughs> and even though Vancouverites do get excited occasionally, the city also has a laid-back West Coast style and offers just about every sports and leisure activity imaginable. Probably the best part of the city is that it seems there is no end to the possibilities and experiences you can take in over a day, a year, even a lifetime. In Vancouver, Mark Doherty, City Pulse. Wow, beautiful picture. And we haven't even started talking about all the beautiful festivals, events, mm -hmm. and hidden places in some of the smaller places on the Lower Mainland. That'll come in the days and weeks to come. We go back to Mark for a beautiful forecast. That's right. Yeah, you know what? I've been living here 10 years. I haven't done half the stuff that mm -hmm. Mark's wrote in his story. I gotta, get, I gotta get cracking here. Beautiful day today, Russ. The only sort of drawback, if you really want to be nitpicky, is it has been a little windy. It was a little windy yesterday, so if you're along the beach and saw that sand being blown up, that's probably why the fish and chips taste a little extra crunchy. These winds are going to die down a little bit uh, later this evening, but they'll uh, kick up through the night and it will start to cool off quite nicely. If you take a look at our satellite picture, the wind is not blowing in any cloud because it is coming from the northwest. It's blowing in a nice big ridge of high pressure, which is going to stay for a couple of days. And if you look on the systems projection, here's what it does. It deflects the uh, jet stream, the storm track, well to the north, over top of us through the north and down around the border. Uh, for us, we get the benefits from it. We get all the sunshine. And we're going to get some pretty warm temperatures, and they'll get warmer, too, even uh, by tomorrow and even by uh, Wednesday. Take a look at the forecast, then, uh, tomorrow for uh, Greater Vancouver, the Fraser Valley. A very sunny day and also a very warm day. Temperatures around the uh, mid to upper 20s here along the city, slightly cooler along the beaches. You head up through the valley, it gets into the 30s. By the time you hit Chilliwack, you're getting up to about 34 degrees or so. Same thing for Vancouver Island. It's also going to be very sunny, also very mild in some places, 27, 26 along the inner coast. Victoria will be 25, a little bit cooler up north, and out at Tofino will be a little cooler as well at 20. Sunshine Coast, House Sound, the Whistler region, Whistler especially, sunny and warm, about 34. You can count them maybe 35, 36 up in the Pemberton Valley. Squamish will be 30 as well, and it looks like 28s along the Sunshine Coast. Towards the end of the week, I know that we're kind of talking about the possibility of showers earlier this morning. The forecast has backed off on that. Looks like it is going to get cooler, a little bit cloudier, but we're going to call it a mix of sun and cloud, so not as drastic a change as we once thought. Whew, thank goodness. Here's uh, across the country. Check out whether, uh, if you're traveling anywhere, it's going to be sunny, and it's also going to be quite warm, too, right across the rest of the country. Uh, in Atlantic Canada, especially in Moncton, you're going to get some thunderstorms, some cloud in Halifax. Elsewhere, it'll be sunny. Daytime highs tomorrow. We'll go anywhere from about uh, 23 in St. John's, very mild in Moncton, like we said, 33 there for the thunderstorms and into the upper 20s in the rest of eastern Canada. Again, across uh, the west, very warm, 25 in Winnipeg, 26 in Regina tomorrow, and even warmer, too, in Edmonton. Here's our five-day forecast. Like we said, there will be a bit of a change, but nothing drastic. Gradually seeing a little more of that cloud by probably by about Thursday or Friday. That'll be morning cloud, but again, tomorrow. It's going to be very, very mild indeed. Would you have a UV index tomorrow? It will be in the high range at about uh, 7.0, so don't forget to uh, wear the sunscreen and cover up if you're going to spend any time out in the sun. And because uh, City TV and City Pulse is everywhere, I plan on getting off this rooftop uh, quite mm -hmm. often, getting out there into the community to uh, find out what the weather is like there and also what's going on in your community. And if I can't get there, why don't you send your community event to me? So uh, if you've got a 
A t-shirt, maybe, if you're having a, a flower or garden sale, send me one of those. And if you're having a bake sale, we always like free samples. Here's how you can contact us. Uh, just give us a fax. We're at uh, 604 874-5206 is our fax number, or you can email us at vannews at citytv.com. And I've got to say, Russ, if your organization can have pre wrap biscotti at your bake sale, I'm there. <laughs> Because that's an impressive organization anyway. So. Exactly. And listen, we also have many deals in the city. You like a good deal? We, I love a good deal. Yeah, we yeah. all like good deals. And it seems most bargain hunters are proud to share their shopping secrets. Our consumer specialist, Elaine Young, is no different. She takes us shopping for inexpensive housewares. But that is just the start of something much bigger. Elaine. Well, Russ, behind the scenes here on Consumer Watch, I try my best to make sure you get the most for your money. So I thought today would be an appropriate time to launch a new regular feature on Consumer Watch. I'm calling it the Bargain Hunter, but I am going to need your help to make it a success. It's about finding those little stores, restaurants, or businesses that offer great value. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite picks where you don't have to spend a lot of money to make your house and kitchen beautiful. You never know where you'll find a bargain hunter's paradise. This houseware store on Main Street has been around for five years. I just discovered it two years ago. Show us what you found so far. Um, actually, the napkins are a great deal for only 99 cents. I, to be honest, I haven't found anything cheaper, and especially because they're good quality. Well, they seem like they're good quality material, and they look fabulous in my apartment. <laughs> you told you yes, the way to go. A must-have. I must okay. have in your home. So, so this is a hard to find item that you found here. Very much so, in fourteen ninety nine, and they're obviously very thick, so I think it's a great deal. I just walk in, actually, it looks like it's a pretty good deal. You know you're the only man in the store. Does that concern you? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Knives, yeah. well, forks, forks, spoons, yeah. all that type, and, and dishes too. What else? Oh, just little knick-knacky things, right? Tablecloths. Oh, tablecloths and, and placemats and what else? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. A lot of things. Every time I go, I just look what I got at that store down the street there. It's like, it's really, you know, cheap. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's inexpensive, I guess. Now, here's what I think the best deal here is $3.99 for these cushion covers. And this one is 100% silk. Can't beat that. I'm amazed I only walked away with this much. <laughs> Comes to $13.71. So that is one of my favorite bargain spots. Now I want to I hear where you like to find bargains. Send us an email to consumerwatch at citytv.com. And remember, it's not cheap stuff we want. We want stuff that's priced at a good value or strategically priced, as some bargain hunters like to say. And in case you're wondering how I'll be choosing each week's bargain pick, I'll be relying on your emails, of course, but I'll also be doing some checks with our savvy shopping experts around town. As well, before any business makes the cut, I'll personally make sure, put it through a reference check, so to speak. Make sure those bargains are really there if you want to shop. Now, next week, I'll be taking you to another one of my favorite bargain spots. And Russ, I know you'll love this one mm -hmm. because I know how much you love to eat sushi. Sushi, yeah. It's a hot button with me. Looking and forward to that. And when it's cheap, it's even better. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Elaine Young, our consumer specialist tonight. And coming up on City Pulse, Dave Gary's take on the timely transformation of this station. Also, from the sunny shores of Malibu, our entertainment specialist has a sit-down with the peerless Pam. Coming up in sports... More Welcome back. She is one of the biggest TV stars anywhere, an international sex symbol and perhaps the most famous British Columbian in the world. She also has hepatitis C. And now Pamela Anderson wants to educate us about it. This week, our own Darren Maharaj joins Pamela Anderson at her Malibu Beach House to talk about this as well as other things. That's right, Russ. The one and only Pamela Anderson invited City Pulse here to her home in California to talk about an issue very personal to her. She makes no bones about the fact that she has hepatitis C and wants to make the public aware on how to avoid it. That's why she's shooting public service announcements all this week here at her home. And that's why we're here to talk to her today. Well, we're here in Malibu today and yes. we're missing the launch, but I'm just really happy to be here. 
Yeah, and well, ha how do you I'm happy that I'm finally doing the interview. And we yes. Have to, like, get this, yes. You can't get this interview satellite. But it's great, though, because, oh, cool. because we've got air. We're kicking it off in style. Good. You know what I mean? City how do you, TV. City TV. That's right. You're so busy these days. You know, in fact, uh, you know, with all the stuff that we've been waiting around here for you to do, you were with <laughs> Karl Lagerfeld shooting a, a photo session, and you're shooting a PSA here today as well. Yeah. Tell me about Thank that. Thank you for doing that with me. You guys are no doing problem. it. My Canadians have pulled through. Uh -huh. um, no, I'm going to do, we're going to do public service announcements for the Liver Foundation for Hepatitis C, just bringing awareness to that because, of course, I have Hepatitis C. So we're just, um, I've been working with the Liver Foundation closely in that we're just going to bring, do lots of things, everything that we can do to raise awareness and, and you know, get financial support and everything that we need. Great. So that's what we're doing here today, too. Now, Thank you for doing that. Well, hey, we're more than glad to do cool. it. But for the people that don't know what Hep C is, can you explain that? Well, it's, it's a huge epidemic right now. It's probably bigger than the you know AIDS epidemic. It's affecting you know millions and millions of people, obviously. And it's you you can get this disease. It's hep it's not like hepatitis A or B. Mm -hmm. Hepatitis C you can only get through blood transfusions or um, I mean it's not too many. It's really hard to give to somebody or get uh -huh. from somebody. It's really blood to blood contact. So you can do it. You can get it by um, tattoo needles or. Um, um, sharing needles if you're a drug user and things mm -hmm. like that. And I, I personally got it from a tattoo needle, but um, it's a way to, there's a way to cure it. There's a, a thing called interferon is what, I'm going to have to go on that medication sooner or later, but it's like nine months of having the flu and you know, your hair falls out and all sorts of things. So uh -huh. it's quite the undertaking once I get into that. But it's just really, I've captured it at a really early stage. And that's what people need to just start getting tested for. It's not something you randomly would just normally get tested for. And you, there's really no symptoms sometimes, except for maybe you're tired or you feel cloudy or you feel, you just feel moody, emotional, which, you know, all people do, especially mm -hmm. me. So I wasn't quite sure that that was anything to do with the disease or not. But um, it's just good to get tested and found out early because then you can get on this um, drug interfere and you can erase it from your life and you won't have it anymore. And, and um, that's a good thing. Well, this was just the start of our time here with Pamela here at her beautiful beach house in Malibu. <laughs> Stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about her ever-busy showbiz schedule. We're going to talk about Jane Magazine. Jane Magazine. We're going to talk about uh, Stripperella. Stripperella. Uh, if you don't know what that Two is, you'll find out. Two very opposite ends of the spectrum, yes. And you've, got, <laughs> and you've got a new book coming out. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Well, a vegetarian cookbook for kids. All that and much more coming up for you tomorrow on City Pulse at 6 in Malibu. I'm Darren Maharaj with... Pamela Anderson. Saying, let's go back to the newsroom. Say hi to Russ for me. Hey, Russ, what's up? <laughs> hi, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Darren Maharaj. Darren getting all the great gigs. Darren will be bringing us entertainment news, a lot of it local, every night here on City Pulse. And Dan O'Toole is up next with sports. But first, on City Pulse, he has been around the broadcasting block, and then some. Dave Gary on our brand new look. This is Nicole. We're at Gravel Island, La Torteria. You're watching City TV. As you know by now, this is a very big day for those of us at 180 West 2nd Avenue. After years of suffering through a kind of corporate identity crisis, we have landed with a very clear mission in mind. And Dave Gary tries to put it all into perspective. Welcome to our coming out. You know, over the last few weeks, I've been searching for the appropriate metaphor for this day. We're new but we're familiar, edgier, but still steady. Are we like the butterfly having emerged from the pupa after the miracle of metamorphosis? Maybe we're like a hot car, new paint, new rubber, a couple of hundred more cubic inches to play with. Well, I think we're a bit like Rip Van Winkle. You know, through a series of corporate shenanigans, somebody let us sleep a bit too long. We're wide awake now. If you're the other guys, you don't want to get in our way. Let's start with the corporate logo. Now, I think we have the simplest, cleanest, most honest approach. No pomegranate, no building blocks, no pseudo stylish global swoosh. What the hell is that? City TV, your city on your TV. Our presentation will be quicker. We're not going to bore you with the obvious. If there's a problem in your community, we want to hear your side. Let the politicians and the planners take a meeting. We're going to be more kinetic, more direct. 
After all, this is the station that brings you sex TV. There's a new breakfast show here. This one designed to smack a smile on your face to get you up and get you going. The last thing we want to do is send you back to bed in a stupor. I must say that some of us didn't quite believe it at first. Not until we started to see fresh paint, new equipment, and a blizzard of employment announcements on the bulletin board. By the time they were bringing in massage therapists for the staff and selling condoms in the lobby, we realized a new day had dawned. You're going to see a lot of fresh new faces, and that's the way it should be. These are talented young people. Their energy is contagious. You will soon find them all over this town. If there's a good story on your street, they'll be there too. And a few of us older farts have hung around because, as my father used to say, there's still a fair measure of piss and vinegar left. There are still stories that we want to tell. Well, from one OF to another, thank you, Dave Gary, for putting it in perspective for us. Piss and vinegar. Are you allowed to say that on TV? Well, I'm not, but no. you are. Oh, I am. Okay. okay. Now, Dan O'Toole is here. Tell us how sports is going to be different. It's going to be different. We're going to be obviously looking at uh, a lot of local things and not staying, just the big teams. No, staying up to date on the, the big things like the Canucks, the Lions, and Indy Week. Great. That's Take it away. Here's Dan O'Toole. On. It's here, yes, yeah, City TV and Indy Week. A calendar of where you need to be and when. Coming right up. But how about Jeff Francis? Not even a month into his first stint in pro ball, UBC product has already gotten the call. Francis, making the jump from Tri-City to Colorado's Long A affiliate in North Carolina. Probably the worst name in baseball, the Asheville Tourists. 